Every single one of us wants to build a highly successful business. I'm looking for Elixir Capital's next big investment, but I won't be finding it, you will. If it's the right idea, you could make some real money. It's a deal worth pitching for. Find an idea, prepare a business plan, then one big moment to deliver. Get ready for the place where entrepreneurs can find their elixir. This is The Pitch. These are the judges. Elixir partner and retail expert, Jill Ross. One of the original founders of Elixir, Graham Busby. An entrepreneur and founder, Stephen Newton. I've always been passionate about entrepreneurs um, and building businesses. I've always tried it myself and I've tried and failed three times. And uh, this is one success, uh, Elixir is a great success. And I just want to be around people who are having a go. I'm here on set waiting for the judges who are ready to invest up to one million pounds into brand new business ideas. They'll be meeting aspiring entrepreneurs who are here today to ask for the investment they need to get their businesses up and running. Hoping to launch his business in the UK, it's Thomas Taylor Benson. It's to pitch an existing business actually. Um, we launched it way back in 2009 in Australia. We've been phenomenally successful and we decided it was now the right time to try and break into the UK market. Hi Thomas. Hi, good afternoon. Ooh. Good afternoon. I'm just going to put my very high tech prop up. Thank you. My name's Tom, I'm the Managing Director of Prize Brokers UK and we started five years ago in Manly in Sydney. People, the two key people are Duncan Pike. He is the co-founder of, or founder should I say, and owner of Prize Brokers Australia. And he's also the co-founder and 50% shareholder of Prize Brokers UK. Myself, uh, co-founder and managing director of Prize Brokers UK. And then we have a, a sort of a crossover general manager who works for both businesses. And we now have four permanent staff members. Uh, we hire roughly between five to 10 people, graduates um, over key promotional periods um, in Australia. And we did just over 10 million in sales uh, with a net profit of around 4 million. And if my maths is right, I think that's a profit margin of around 42%. So that, that's a sort of success in Australia prompted us to launch in the UK. It's, it's a massive market. Last year alone, there was some 50 billion spent in promotional marketing. And 15 billion of that was spent simply on prizes and rewards. We're an independent agency and we specialise in sourcing and procuring prizes for companies that want to run any sort of particular presentation and promotion, it's irrespective of the channel they want to run those promotions in. To give you a better idea of exactly what we do, I'm going to use my very high-tech prop here, so the big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> and what it is, essentially, is it's a spoon on a box. All you really need to know is at some point um, during that negotiation stage between agencies and clients to run a promotion, Somebody, somewhere, whether it's the client, whether it's the agency, <coughs> is going to have to go and buy that spoon. They're then going to have to engrave that spoon. They're going to have to get that spoon sent to wherever it has to be sent to, to get packed into the box or sent to a, to a winner. And that is simply what we do. Uh, and we have two very, very advanced tech partners who do a lot of, um, or develop a lot of apps and, and online promotional mechanics. Um, and so we've been very lucky to secure agreements with the two of those. So it's a, it's a big plus for us. Two of the partners that we have, they're already talking to some clients in South Africa. Um, and they've been asked the question about prize procurement. And we're, one of the other partners is, is talking to a major client in the US. Uh, same issue. Um, do you do prize procurement as well? So on the back of those, we could potentially, should we receive some investment, be able to bring that forward and we could launch in those two markets as early as middle of next year. We're looking around about sort of three level, three areas um, of investment from Elixir. The one would be some sort of management expertise or perhaps business mentorship. The other would be a capital investment of around 80 to 100,000 um, pounds. And then the third would be the opportunity for us to potentially have access to some of your clients. Why should you invest with us? Um, we are a safe pair of hands. Uh, I think the more important financial concerns are that this type of business, there's a very low financial cost um, of entry into the market. Um, but there are significantly higher rewards, um, I think, as some of the numbers I've given you have demonstrated. 
uh, and unlike a traditional agency or perhaps even a tech startup, um, you get those returns potentially far quicker um, than in, in, in sort of other traditional businesses. We have a proven business model. Um, I've given you some of the figures. And I think the other compelling uh, evidence of that is our significant year-on-year -year, um, growth in profitability. Um, and that's it. Very simple. What gives you your buying power? Is it your relationship? Mostly our relationships with, A, the suppliers, but also with those support services we provide. Um, so the fixed fee insurers, uh, the fulfillment companies. It doesn't take a long time to get all of that sorted, but it's very tedious for someone who has got other stuff to do. Um, so uh, in Australia, on average, we save around 16% on price. What makes you different to your competition? Most of the competition, in fact, well, in, in Australia, there's very little competition. Prize Brokers is the prize broking agency in Australia at the moment. In the UK, what makes us significantly different is we don't specialise in any particular niche. So a couple of questions on the ask. Yes. Um, what would we get in return? Probably start off with saying, you know, what, how's 10%? Um, but again, within that range of 80 to, to 100, I think there's, you know, a negotiation or a, an equity stake doesn't necessarily just have to be about the money. Um, for example, if we were doing this on our own, we'd have to get an office, we'd need all our various money for office set up. But if you turned around and said, well, actually, we can provide you with an office, we can provide you with the furniture, we can give you the IT lines, we can give you the phone lines, we're going to save you 20 grand, great. You know, uh, let's reduce the amount. I'm trying to understand the 10 million turnover, we're talking dollars now, yeah. Aussie dollars. 10 Five million, million pounds, yeah. Sorry? Five million pounds, if it's easy. Yeah, Harvard, yeah. Five million pounds, two, two million pound profit, right? I got the impression about 40, 50% of that is given to staff. Yes. Yeah? So there's about a million left over for yeah. the shareholder in that case, Duncan, right? So I still have this niggling question that says to me, if it's such a good cash generator, if that was me with a million pounds, yeah. I'd chuck a hundred at you, no problem, and say, do that again in the UK, right? Because what it does for me is it diversifies my portfolio. Yeah. It gets, even if I'm sharing it with you 50-50, which is what he is doing, right? What he's doing is he's buying, for 100K, he's buying, um, I'm just rounding to 100, I know it could be 80 to 100 or even 50 if you talk infrastructure or whatever, but he's buying a, a channel that could get into that same kind of number in three to five years' time again. So I'm puzzled as to why he's not doing that. Does he not believe it himself? Because to me, that would be a no-brainer. And secondly, why aren't you doing that? Doing what? Putting the 100K in yourself and accelerating it. Don't have it at the minute. You know, we, yes, why would you give it away? I mean, because I'm going to say to you, if I say to you, here's 100, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you to give away a share of the profit you're going to make. Yeah. Why would you give that away, just for speed? Away. I wouldn't. But you're asking for that. You're saying yeah. to me, give us 100K, we'll get there quicker, but for that, I'll give some of it to you. Why? I think predominantly because we're in, a, in, in this country, we're in a much more, as I said, it's a bigger market and the competition is more robust. We do need a lot of business help. Um, you know, I'm very good at what I do in, in a particular industry. Um, but, you know, when we talk about, you know, how are we going to grow the business, are we going to grow it, uh, that's the expertise that we need. You know, that's the sort of mentoring ship we need. How do we get a business from something that's doing okay in two or three years' time, but how do we get it to be, you know, a super business? I don't have that expertise. Um, I think there's very few people who do. Um, and I think that's why we come to you know, companies like yourself. How are we going to do that? What do we need to do to get there? Um, and that's essentially what I believe we're buying. It's that expertise that we don't have. Just remind me of the company structure. So Prize Brokers UK, yeah. Prize Brokers Australia, yeah. totally separate legal entities. To totally separate. 100% owned by Duncan. Duncan. 50-50, yeah. yeah. And if you were going to go for an exit in five years, yeah. That would just be the UK, or would it be? No, it would be both. But obviously, Duncan would sell uh, Prize Brokers Australia, uh, Prize Brokers UK. It would have to be a joint decision. So I'd either decide to buy him out, or he'd buy me out, or uh, we'd sell out together. 
What will be the USP on Thursday for the pitches or the three you've got coming up? Essentially that we're, you know, we, we provide a seamless end-to-end -end service and we are focused solely on prize procurement. And we have the technical innovations to provide those promotional mechanics which don't exist in the UK. Um, I, can, I mean, details on one is a, it's an application that it reads a receipt. The logarithm is able to then calculate whatever discount um, the client wishes to give, but that goes into an online wallet. Uh, and then when you go back to that client, you can either pay out of your wallet or you can transfer that money direct into your bank account. So it's almost an immediate cashback. So it's very good for engendering loyalty schemes, but you're getting money straight away. Is away. that a company that is in Australia? Yeah. And it, it works with you guys? Yeah, we have a license. You have a license here. Exclusive license. Yeah. And you have that exclusive license here for the UK too? Yeah. 70% of Australians use it. Did I hear you correctly? 70% of the whole Australian population? Yeah, it's that successful. And it started Bloody hell. eight years ago and it's been refined. Who owns that? Who owns no, we don't own it. That's <laughs> so a good question. Yeah. Though. Sorry, but, 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 I, but I, could, I, could spot him. I could possibly give you an introduction. Thomas, would you mind giving us half not an hour or so to have a chat? Not and at all. Um, I'm not going to leave that because I know you guys. Yeah, no, that, that uh, is <laughs> crucial. So yeah. You want the spoon, yeah. You need to buy three of these. Bring some milk. There's milk up there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank and you. We'll speak to you in, in a short while. Sure. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Okay, what do people think of price brokers? I think it's a simple business, yeah. easy to understand. Uh, it's been proven, albeit in a much smaller market, like Australia. Um, and I mean, it's working. It's a profitable business. <laughs> Questions for me really are around commitment. I think your point around, it's, if it's so interesting and profitable, why are they not going to invest in the, in the UK market, which is a much bigger and tougher market to get into? So for me, that's a question mark. Yeah, I think the proposition is, is the right one, because I know you mentioned why not be a holistic provider. Um, and definitely to the point of a lot of these big companies, their preferred agency, they just won't stray away from that. So it wouldn't make sense to move from the current proposition. But it sounds a bit boring. It sounds a bit like, <laughs> in the sense that, but in that, that's almost the beauty of it mm. and the simplicity of it is that mm. no one's, it's not the sexy, exciting tech startup. It's actually, you know what, there's a service and a product and people want to buy it. And, and clients you know, don't want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and if, you know, if, you know, it sounds like, a, sounds like a decent business model. Uh, at least to give it a shot, I guess. We've got some good technical partners. The reason I liked this one initially was there's a real life business that makes $4 mm -hmm. million, dollars, Aussie dollars, of $10 million in revenue. You can't knock a business that does that. It's a good business. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, it's hard to ignore that, you know. Um, why wouldn't we be that investor? What's your instinct tell you, Karen? I would ask him to match it. Not necessarily match the whole 100K, but to, to put his money where his mouth is. He's, he's a 50% owner of the business. Why don't you ask him to put some cash in? I mean, there's an interesting idea um, we could do. So say he's looking for accommodation, he's looking for telephone lines, he's looking for spare capacity. You know, if we've got spare capacity, we could definitely do all of that. For that, we could do a deal and have a 5% stake for those infrastructure costs that we defray for, for him. And the management, mentoring and... And all of that stuff too, that, yeah. yeah. And then we could throw in, you know, if the business needs cash downstream as we get to know you... There's an option. There's an option for us to put cash in for further equity, which we can negotiate at the time, under the condition that Duncan puts exactly the same cash in. Mm. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, I think that makes so. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, th I, I think you'll go for it. Do you? I'm being optimistic. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think he's a man that needs help. And he's potentially got 100 people behind him just by saying yes to this. Why wouldn't you? OK, let's get him back. Um, thanks very much for the pitch. We thought it was fantastic. Um, and as I said, what we're all very interested in is the fact that this is a very profitable business in Australia. Right. Uh, it, it, it's, um, it's seldom you see businesses starting somewhere that have that foundation, if you like. But, but while that's a great plus, it's also a great question mark. I'm not 100%, I mean, the Australian market has to be simpler, I think, by your own admission yes. in the conversation. It has to be a much simpler market. You've kind of the only prize broker yeah. operation out there. You've cornered a market share. And, and frankly, none of us are experts in this market, so we're a little bit exposed with all of that. 
So there's this big doubt as to can you translate directly into Australia, from Australia into the UK, South Africa, US, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, around yeah. the world. So there's all of these unanswered questions that we, right. we're not 100 percent sure that gives us a lot of security around this. But having said that, I think we can help each other. So instead of going down the path that you suggested, I've got a counter proposal. Right. Yeah. To allow us to try and clear some of these uncertainties over time, what I want to offer you is that you can work with us in our premises. Right. right? Of course, you get that building, you get the telephone lines, you get all of that right. stuff. But you get access to our people. That will lead to us having a more concrete conversation about actually putting cash in and accelerating the business right. through cash, right? Sure. I'm still puzzled as to why Duncan isn't putting his money into this. What you're asking, let's say £100,000, for a business that in five years, according to the accelerated projection, I think I've got my yep. numbers right, you think it'll be £2 million of profit, right? Yep. It seems like a crazy thing not to invest in. So I'm, I'm asking myself, why isn't Duncan doing that? Yep. Okay. Because it does seem odd to me that he wouldn't do that. He's actually investing quite heavily in, they have an opportunity, or he has an opportunity to tie in with prize brokers with a loyalty reward, uh, loyalty program. So it's got nothing to do with uh, rewards. It's about creating a loyalty scheme, but like a Boots or a Tesco. Right. Um, and that is something he's invested in from the beginning of the year. So that's why essentially he's not putting as much in. Um, as he would want. So if you ask us to put real cash in in a few months time once we work together and we can see the opportunity, we'd want to see him in it as well. Sure. Right, because that way we, we, we think we're tying all parties okay. in. Okay. Um, for that we'd want 5% because that way you'd have us interested. Sure. Yeah, because I can see that my partners and actually my team would be interested in helping you okay. for the revenue opportunity that that could provide for us. Right. Is that clear? Yeah, very. Some very interesting. What do you think about it? Uh, I like it. I do indeed. So, so, just so we, are we agreeing here? Is that what we're doing? Yes, I think we are. You will work in our offices for that privilege, for the, you'll give us 5% of the business. Yeah. Yeah. And if down the line, if we iron out some of these things that I, I, I spoke about, yeah. we need to put some cash in. Yes. We'll talk about that again for further equity. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Okay. Agreed. Awesome. Perfect. Fantastic. Love it. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, man. Well, Excellent. Thank you very much, Graham. Thank Likewise. You. Thomas, congratulations. Thank you very that much. That went well. It did. So it how did. are you feeling? Elated, really. Fantastic. Um, it was a result we weren't quite expecting. Um, what can I say? It's fantastic. Excellent. Really pleased with it. Uh, to have an outcome like this, who could have asked for more? Well, I wish you the very best of luck. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Thank it was great so to have you as part of the first pitch. Thank you. Thomas certainly has put his skin in the game. You know, um, he's certainly put you know his personal credibility out there, and he's also putting his own money on the line. You know, this is the sort of business that obviously goes on, but I've never come across it myself. What was really exciting about that was seeing the real live success story that they'd made Australia into. I think the the deal we struck allows us to grow together. And if it doesn't work, we can grow apart, so to speak. And um, therefore, it, w it should work for both parties. And that's what I was trying to achieve was a win-win. Today, our pitcher walked away with investment. Could your business be next? Join us next time at The Pitch.